Imperator Nikolai I was the last iteration of Gangut-style dreadnought battleships of the Imperial Russian Navy, and although launched, she would never be completed. In the Black Sea, the Russians had started building three battleships which were smaller, slower, but better armoured derivatives of the Gangut class. These were the Imperatrista Maria class, and designed to counter the threat posed by the Ottoman order of two super dreadnoughts, which through a series of cancellations and repurchases would eventually end up as the ships that became HMS Agincourt and HMS Erin. However, in 1913, Turkey was on a bit of a spending spree, making noises about buying the Almirante Latore class from Chile and a German battlecruiser, shockingly enough from Germany, eventually settling on actually reordering the sister ship of the soon-to-be HMS Erin. Faced with a potential three Ottoman battleships, two armed with 13.5-inch guns and one armed with all the 12-inch guns, the Russian Admiralty decided that a fourth ship was needed, since the three existing ships under construction were armed only with 12-inch guns. Granted, they were the excellent Russian 12-inch 52 caliber gun, but still no one wants a close to even fight if they can avoid it. A number of designs were considered. An improved version of the currently building ships, a version that replaced the triple 12 inch with twin 14 inch, or a brand new design with 10 or 12 14 inch guns, with each option needing longer and longer to design and build due to the greater levels of change. Since time was of the essence and the 12 inch gun's penetration performance was so good, it was decided to stick to the older layout of four triple turrets with the 12 inch gun, which would also make operation with the other battleships easier due to the common armament, given the developing tactics on the Black Sea Fleet that called for multiple ships to concentrate overwhelming fire on a single target before moving on. Thus, instead, most of the effort was concentrated on greater protection. Whilst limits on Russian industry meant that the main belt thickness could not be increased beyond 10.6 inches without buying plate from abroad, the overall coverage of the ship's armour was expanded, a face-hardened plate was introduced in areas where thinner plates had previously been homogeneous armour only, and a thicker, face-hardened inner bulkhead was placed behind the main belt as well as the main battery, laid out, as with previous classes, all on one level, running fore to aft, along the centre line, 20 single casement mounted 5.1 inch guns made up the secondary battery, along with four 3.5 inch anti-aircraft guns and four lightweight submerged torpedo tubes. Her four shafts received a fraction under 30,000 shaft horsepower from her turbine power plant for a top speed of 21 knots using mixed coal and oil firing and she was also completed with an icebreaker bow, not for use in the Black Sea, but for potential use further north in the future. Despite the outbreak of World War I, she was ordered in 1914, laid down in 1915, and launched in 1916, a remarkable turn of speed for the Russian yards, even with a number of changes made during construction, including the addition of a six-foot-high lightweight bulwark to her bows for better sea keeping after the first of her half-sisters proved to be nose heavy and thus very wet in service. Another alternative that was considered was to add an additional deck to the forecastle area of the ship. This would have elevated the front turret one deck higher and improved sea keeping at least in theory and is reflected in a number of models and plans of the ship as exists today, but the addition of an entire full-strength forecastle deck probably would have forced the ship's bow deeper, thus counteracting most of the benefits that might have resulted on paper from its addition. However, during her fitting out phase, Russia caught a rather long-term case of communism, and work gradually ground to a halt. Apart from renaming the incomplete hull Demokratia, nothing much was done after this, with German troops who briefly occupied the area also taking relatively little interest. In 1923, having regained control of the area after the Treaty of Versailles, the Soviets looked at completing the ship to enhance the strength of the Black Sea Fleet, which now had no dreadnoughts, the three previous dreadnoughts having been lost to magazine explosion, scuttling, and being taken as a war prize respectively. But it rapidly became obvious that the Hulk was in poor condition, and her design, both in terms of speed and torpedo defence, was a generation or two behind the new interwar standards. 
with four incomplete battlecruisers sitting in the docks, they seem to be a far more attractive prospect than the costly task of repairing and completing an older, slower and less heavily armed single vessel. Instead, after a lengthy debate, as well as a failure to sell her to an overseas scrapyard in exchange for some hard foreign currency, she would be instead towed to Sevastopol in 1927 and scrapped there instead. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.